So we have the Mac Pro here. What have we seen the Mac Pro? This is it right here. It's a prototype. They sent it over to us because, you know, all the nice things we say about Apple. And they said, hey, we want you guys to try it out. And yeah, it's an unanodized it. prototype. It's totally fine. Yeah, you know what? After looking at this, I've realized that we can do much better. So why don't we recycle this one <laughs> and build our own? Yeah, let's build our own. All right, so we're going to build... Uh, can we call this the Kill Your uh, Mac Pro video? Yeah, this is the Kill Your Mac Pro video. Well, uh, we've also got to do a, a disclaimer here because we don't actually know exactly what Apple's going to put in the Mac Pro, but they just announced pricing and some more details about the the low end. The lowest end Mac Pro you can get is going to be three thousand US dollars, and they've said how fast the chip is and how much RAM you're getting and what graphics cards you're getting. So we think we know kind of what they're doing, even though the the part numbers are specific to Apple. Like we got a secret Xeon. Nobody else can know what it is. We've got a secret Fire Pro, and we've got two of them. And then they've got that fancy case. That's probably the most interesting thing going on here. They've got the trash can case uh, that's very uh, good. It's supposed to be very good acoustically uh, and also do a pretty good job with the, the cooling and all that. But what we're going to do is we're going to build a workstation for all the rest of us who want to get some work done and don't care about having a trash can on our desk. Maybe we're going to do something like this. Yeah, there we go. This is the Aquila. Nice new uh, micro ATX case. There's not a lot of Socket 2011 micro ATX motherboards, but we're going to put a lot of gaming parts in here and just really focus on uh, productivity in the sense of video editing, 3D rendering, and that sort of thing. If you want to go bigger, you can go bigger. So here we have a couple different options. A full-size option, extremely quiet full-size option, and a decently quiet um, mid-size option. I'd and like to point out that the full-size option is still only three-quarters as big as the old Mac Pro. <laughs> the old Mac Pro was basically a truck. If you want the old Mac Pro, contact Lee and Lee. <laughs> All right, so here's what we have. These two cases. Let's go ahead and put some parts in them. What we have to go on right now is the E5-1620. It's a 3.6 turbo to 3.8. That's right in the same range. So that should be about a $300 processor. And we also know that an i7 generally outperforms the Xeon. Well, especially in this price range. Yes. And so we're, we're just going to go crazy, and we're going to go for an i7-4930K. It's a six-core part. It's more expensive than that part in particular. But even the Xeon that's around five to $600 cannot compete with this one. The, the, the six-core i7 is just freaking fast. And if you did want to play games, which a lot of us do, you can really play games on this. The Xeon does suffer in gameplay. Um, similar amount of, uh, of cash. It's just... It's just a freaking fast part. Ivy Bridge E is nice as well. And the benchmarks we're looking at are at cpubenchmark.net. We're just using that as a baseline. And have a look here. There's the uh, 1620. And all the way up to the top, this, this was obviously done a while back because the 1620 came out in 2012. Um, and there's the 3930K all the way at the top, absolutely destroying it in CPU mark. Now, there may be some specific applications where the Xeons do a little bit better. But for your money, you will be better off with the i7-4930K. The main thing you're going to be losing with the 4930K is the ability to use error correcting memory. Uh, but in this price point and at the speed we're going for, and also the purpose of the system, I'm not too worried about error correcting. It's not going to be a home server or anything like that. I'm not really worried about error correcting because you're not putting it in the trash can furnace with all the other parts. <laughs> yeah, it's going to go in here and it's going to have much better airflow. Possibly be a little bit louder in this one than the uh, Apple, but it's going to be quieter in the fractal. The Zygmatech really, honestly, is only about 1.75 times the size and volume of the uh, Apple trash can. I think it looks a lot better to me, but that's just my own part. This is the best case that Zygmatech has made, in my opinion. It's very similar to a case from... Uh, Aerocool. Yeah, Aerocool. Very similar. We're in not fact. really sure what's up with that. The very Aerocool similar. case has a lot more plastic, so maybe that's about sound dampening, but honestly, this case is very quiet. All right, we're going to get to the graphics card now, and we are going to destroy uh, whatever. I'm, I'm not sure exactly what graphics card they are going to be putting in there. It's a Fire Pro, um, and it looks a lot like, I don't know, maybe a double W7000, but with less memory. I don't know. Who knows? Yeah, we don't know. It's a D300. They claim it's 2 gigs per GPU. Well, how about we can do, in this price range, we can do two graphics cards each with 4 gigabytes of GDDR5. Um, and this is the W7000. This, isn't, this, is, this little card is a monster. And you know what else is interesting? I know this is a, a workstation graphics card. This is going to be an OpenCL just monster if you're going to be doing any OpenCL products or um, OpenCL um, programs, no problem. As far as gaming goes, it's around the same speed as a 7870. So two of these in your system in Crossfire. The drivers are not made for gaming, but like I said, we're using a gaming motherboard. You will also be able to play some games even with the Fire Pro W7000. 
for the motherboard, the Asus Rampage for Gene. Um, and the reason we're going with that is because in this system, it's the only Socket 2011 motherboard that's worth a damn. I mean, compared to the Apple, the Apple's given you a ton of Thunderbolt connectivity options. If that's what you need, probably gonna have to go with the Apple. Yeah. And, and then run bootcamp so you can have Windows. And then the Thunderbolt drivers will be really flaky and you can't plug stuff in while the computer's already booted. But you can like daisy chain monitors and all kinds of things. We can daisy chain display port. You can daisy chain display port and we'll be able to get some 4K monitors going on with this. Well, and also we have four display per display pert. We have four full size display ports per graphics card. I think that I would much rather have 10 gig ethernet versus the Thunderbolt insanity because I'm not going to be using Thunderbolt for local storage. That's crazy. I'd rather have 10 gig. And the, the, they haven't advertised a 10 gig ethernet option on the Mac Pros really little disturbing and you've also have some expansion room in here to mount plenty of hard drives if you wanted to and in here you can mount a, a plethora i said plethora yeah and the full size option you could go two graphics cards 10 gig of ethernet and hdmi capture yeah no problem or you could even mount a thunderbolt card yeah you could even do a thunderbolt card um and if you're gonna go the full size option i would recommend getting a different motherboard it's a little bit more expensive but um it's the one i'm using at home right now the um p9 x79 there's, there's a lot of different options. Some of them have Thunderbolt, some of them do not have Thunderbolt. The one I have is the P9X79-E uh, workstation motherboard. And uh, it's just completely loaded. So if you're going to, you know, if you're willing to spend a little bit more money, you can get a really, really insanely awesome motherboard, but that'll only fit into the Fractal Define R4 or full-size ATX case. Memory. Um, a lot of times with the memory, I just go and find, you know, any decent... A uh, piece of memory that's on sale because right now with the memory prices, you know, because it was a fire, the factory or whatever burned down. So there's kind of a memory shortage. Butterfly flapped its wings in rural Japan. <laughs> and, then, and now the memory prices have gone through the freaking roof. But I found some crucial um, ballistics. It's it's uh, the gaming RAM. It's freaking gaming RAM. 16 gigabyte kit, two sticks of eight. Make sure that you get, um, you know, at least each stick, make sure that it's eight because there's only... Uh, four RAM slots in here and this is a quad channel motherboard so what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to get two and run them in dual channel to give us 16. I would highly recommend that you get two sets of this so that you can run quad channel and have 32 gigabytes of memory. Now the, the Mac apparently comes with two sticks of four and two sticks of two. Just because the, they want quad channel. 12 gigs. Yeah. But but I mean it's mix and match quad channel which i don't know if that's allowed i mean sometimes it's allowed sometimes it's not i'm we, sure they've made it allowed we had a big flame war about that because the benchmarks did not like matched quad channel was outperforming unmatched quad channel on some benchmarks on some other boards but some other boards you can mix and match and well, still is, get dual channel this is so cheap right now you may as well buy two of these and just run you know quad channel each one of them populated with an eight gigabyte stick. Yeah, in other words, honestly, Apple at three thousand dollars for this much markup. Why did you bother with twelve gig? Just sixteen <laughs> just, gigs. It's like it's like ten dollars. <laughs> what the hell, dude? Like, no, it must not. And for the SSD, we're gonna go with the um, the one that's winning all of the the benchmarks as far as just um, what's that benchmark that you, you kept looking at? Where they're just destroying the drives. Oh, I can't remember. It's like pound or something. No, it's not pound. It's like uh, Anvil. Anvil. Yeah, they've been pretty much pounding these things on the Anvil. And uh, the Corsair Neutron Series GTX uh, 240 gigabyte SSD is doing really well and uh, you can get them for 220 bucks currently. Who knows if the price is gonna go up or down. I'm sure it'll go up and down both. But um, grab as many of those as you can get, two or three. If you get three, you can run RAID 5, uh, which is gonna give you extreme speed and also some you know redundancy as well. We, we're going to give you two price points, and the upper end price point is you're running three of those in RAID 5. Yeah. Because we're crazy. And you can get one of them, because, I mean, that one only comes with one SSD, the Apple. But run three in RAID 5, it's going to make everything so freaking fast. Uh, if you really want storage, just get one of these, and then spend the rest of the money getting a couple three terabyte hard drives. And you can run those in RAID as well. I would probably run those in, in um, RAID so that you can get redundancy and not so much RAID, RAID 1 instead of RAID 0. For the power supply, Corsair RM Series 850 watt um, Skull certified power supply for 150 bucks. I have this power supply in my own system. So a lot of people are like, Do you guys even use this stuff? Yes, it's in my own system, <laughs> and I like it. It is it is possible to find um, more power supplies that are 80 plus gold anywhere from the $80 to the $160 range, depending on your long term upgrade options and a whole bunch of other things. But make sure it's 80 plus gold. 
Yeah. I mean, you can get 80 plus silver maybe. Yeah, good, but... well, you could probably do silver. If you're not planning to for really load it down, you'd probably be okay. But I, honestly, for a workstation, I'd go 80 plus, certainly no less than silver. It's the case options. So we have the two cases here. You guys have seen them. There's a lot you can do with either one of these cases. I'm really impressed uh, with this micro ATX ca case. You said it's probably your favorite mi micro ATX case ever, right? Yeah, this is right now. This is probably my favorite micro ATX ca case ever because it's it's it's. I don't want to say no frills because that has a negative connotation, but it's it's really minimalist and understated. But you can use full size components internally. It's really nice. It gets down to business and it's sleek. Yeah. All right, so if you want to get really creative and you want CUDA and you want an, a, an insane quadro, like how much is the K K5000 worth? Like, uh, it's like $1,200, $1,500, something yeah. like that. So if you like CUDA, what you can do is you can get a GTX 680, not a 780, and then you can modify it. That requires some soldering. Basically, what you want to do is you want to go here. you got to move some resistors around, solder some stuff around, and then the card will start reporting as a um, K5000. So this guy's actually modified a... 690 and so half of the 690 is reporting as a quadro and the other half is reporting as a g-force which is you know slightly so evil. he's got a gtx 680 and a quadro in this system and it's only taking up one slot yes exactly <laughs> <laughs> if you're crazy you can do that we do not take responsibility if you fry anything or if you get electrocuted or if you create a, a forest fire i don't know well, we take no responsibility for anything ever and it turns out this technique will also work on teslas so if you guys want to give us a tesla and have a, have a Tesla converted into a Quadro, you can do it. But don't know how to do it on a 780 yet, or if it's possible at a 780. But if you have a Tesla that you're just, you know, laying around. You want <laughs> to just laying around that you want to destroy, possibly. Yeah, you want to possibly destroy it and give it to us. We might be able to modify it and put that on YouTube. Yeah, we're Tesla testers. Just to recap, if you want to spend $3,000 on a piece of equipment, you can get an insane machine better than the entry-level Mac Pro for three grand, or you can spend, what, about $1,000 less and get something equivalent. You know, Apple used to be for hipsters, but how hipster would it be if people walk into your design firm in New York City and see one of these sitting there, and, and, they, and everyone else has the Apple, the Mac Pro, and they go, what's that? And you go, oh, it's our Mac Pro alternative PC. You wouldn't it's understand. Faster. You, yeah, you've you've probably never heard of it. It's an Aquila, uh, but we call it the, I don't know, the Mohawk uh, Turtle. <laughs> I'm, I'm just waiting for the year of desktop Linux so that we've got a viable alternative to Windows for the desktop operating system. Linux is almost there, actually, for developers. There are a lot of really good developer tools for Linux now, oh. and you can actually run that as your desktop I mean, OS. Yeah, Pix Pixar uses Linux. Yeah, uh, way to digital. Way to digital if you're using Blender or something like that. You can just abandon and go straight to Linux and you'll be fine. But if you need uh, video editing, I don't think it's quite a snuff on Linux. Some people would argue with that. But, you know, whatever you need, you can build. And uh, we're here to help. Jump in the forum. All of the links that we've talked about to all these different products that we are recommending are in the description. You just, well, actually, just click on the screen. We've got the technology on it. Take it over to the website. Everything's there. And uh, you guys can ask questions there and we'll hop in and help you out. We'll see you next time.